is, is massive? Is that what you're asking me? You're asking you to say massive? Is that it? Is that what you want? Do I look like a performative monkey to you? Massive? All right, well, we're talking about a massive hit that is MetaView. Make sure you go ahead and check out MetaView's app, which you want to go ahead and download today. Get yourself the uh, get yourself the iOS app and also get yourself the uh, bookmarks set up on your phone for Android users as we get ready to get in to Grand Finals. I am, in fact, unhinged. Y'all are coming at me, and also Ben is unhinged. Been waiting for quite a while to get themselves into this matchup. And right now, just coming out, guns a blazing, swinging, and then 8-Bit Man immediately answers right back. I feel like on paper, both of these characters ought to be looking to play reaction early, but if there's anything that tonight has shown us, these people are willing to brawl. They're willing to just get their hands dirty and get it done as quick as possible. Yeah, it's fun. I, I love it because, like, everybody's been willing to scrap. Everybody's been willing to throw out, like, throw hands. Got almost... Not necessarily the best DI in that situation, but you uh, the, just just able to live long enough. That phantom coming in though, and now you're being forced to recover high because of the dim's fire, and then still getting caught at ledge. I gotta say, man, one of the worst characters in terms of being able to navigate around the pressure from phantom is actually Rob, because even though you want to maybe rise up, throw a laser out, or throw like a like a gyro out, you're gonna get hit before that phantom uh, before you get to do it, because phantom actually has pretty quick startup. I'm just sitting here in absolute awe the way that Ben is snatching 8-bit out of the sky. Whether it's grab, whether it's uphill, like the scoops are relentless here. It's tons of damage inwards. And this is before we even start to see the Phantom. Phantom closed out that first stock for Ben. We see up smash as a reversal, close it out for 8-bit. But I'm really impressed with oh how he's just taking it right to 8-bit. That down air is always such a bait because it has it has deceptively low end lag, even though it looks like something that should have more. And just covering with the forwarder as well. Ben, even after losing that stock, immediately answering back. Also, Papa and the Franks put some respect on their name. This is one of the best, if not the best, uh, Zelda offline in general. I don't want to hear none of that Wi-Fi Zelda stuff. Yeah, now, Ben has always had a very unique way of playing. And in spite of this character's reputation for online play, I feel like Ben has found a lot of success by being able to actually subvert a lot of the expectations that people see Zelda for. They figure, oh, she's going to play with Din's Fire at max distance, going to be camping with Phantom. Oh, what am I going to do? Meanwhile, Ben is right in your face, learning sweet spot after sweet spot, constantly racking up the damage and outright smothering you with her buttons. Look at that, just running up and forcing to the roll, knew that something was going to happen. Ben is basically playing with them right now. That is another... Uh, situation right there getting called out by the phantom because there's not much you could do in that spot right you air dodge down what happens you either grab ledge and you get lucky and then you're forced into a ledge trap or you air dodge too far down and now you have to worry about another easier ledge trap set up from zelda one of the things that worked so well for uh ven was nehru's love not only on defense but on offense he was using it as an aggressive tool to cover roll-ins to cover disadvantage uh, anytime he decided to swing because most of the time you're taking a 50 50 guess is they oh actually not 50 50 is the zelda gonna jump is the zelda gonna air dodge or are they gonna hit neutral b on the way down and it's a pretty safe move if you decide to try and challenge it so ape man unfortunately uh doesn't get to chat um, if you guys sub to 2g gaming i'm letting you guys know ajax has one line in carl weaver's voice oh i leave God. it in your hands here just one sub though i mean like <laughs> he says whatever line you want almost i mean come on we gotta keep it pg here but yeah well see when i start laughing it actually it's actually hard to pull it out so I, I'll, I'll 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 give it a shot if somebody subs i will work toward i will i'll i'll, I'll say something I'll, I'll i'll do it <laughs> we we left this timeline <laughs> <laughs> Jim is just like, no, not again. <laughs> Getting ourselves back to the set. Game 2 bringing us to Battlefield. I don't know about this big Ajax. This one, I feel like on paper, like Rob's going to have a field day. Being able to shark out the plats, being able to combo through them. It's a really good defensive stage. It's a really good offensive stage. But I don't know if it's going to help him with his problems that we saw from Ben in that game 1. Yeah, what I do know, though, 
is that we got sub hype for Mooncake 3441 with the Prime. Thank you so much for supporting me in my dreams to get money for having a date with Jimmy's mom. Mom, pick me up. I'm scared. <laughs> I, you know, I muted the mic because I started laughing immediately. People have no idea how hard that was for me to get out because I couldn't, I couldn't get it. <laughs> so right now, uh, yeah, you said you said everything you said at the beginning was uh, exactly correct in terms of like it. It seemed like an odd pick at first. You know, you go to battlefield, maybe try to close the gap a bit more, try to have a little more room work work with, but. Ven has pretty much been playing the combo game. And even though this is one throw away from getting yourself back into it, there it is. It's going to even the game back up. Um, I do think that this is still an incredibly uh, smart... Like, it's still incredibly smart play from Ven so far, and Ape Man is kind of playing on the back pedal here. The thing that I actually really like about Ven's approach to this matchup is that we're constantly seeing the Phantom come out, and now I know that's not too important. That's not too unexpected in Zelda. What is unexpected is the fact that he's just constantly just letting the Phantom rip. The pressure of Phantom may, may be getting put down instead of just outright coming out has led to so much damage and several kills at this point from Ben. And Apit has to catch on to this change because I feel like he's expecting one behavior that is just not present from his player. Yeah, I think a majority of what Ape Man actually has to do is like almost play like a brawler character because you've been like you you want Gyro out. And the problem is Gyro is mostly oh, there. You go, laser is gonna shut down the, the Phantom. If if Zelda gets hit, and Phantom does disappear. But you like you almost need to try and fight up close. The problem is, you know, as I say that, Ven has been answering right back. The down tilts from Ven have an been answering. The neutral bees have been answering. That Miss Tech is not the answer though, and that is Ape Man getting himself back in the game. <laughs> we, we, just, we don't, we don't get those crouches. texts out here, bro. That was not the tactical crouch time, though. That was not it. That was not it. We gotta get a little bit more tactical about these because every time someone's putting them out on stream, they're getting immediately punished. Fun to get body in full effect here as Ven is one game away from taking tonight's tournament. Yep, when uh, Ven is uh, definitely, I think actually it was Ven that ended up losing to Mabel recently as well. So Ven was one set away from getting themselves into a W for MSM. Now getting back into it and returning here in Winter Side and honestly looking like nobody's gonna stop them. Like Vegas, the Vegas is strong right now, but if you got look, if you got money, throw it, throw it on Ven. <laughs> Wait, no, we're not gambling here. Uh, I but, just like to remind you in the chat, but I just looking to put Ape in losers. You gave him the three one in winter semis, so bro. it looks like Ben is looking for the lead here. But I don't even know if he's gonna let the one game come through. Yeah, and I don't think I see Ape Man necessarily switching off to Diddy here either, because Diddy Kong, surprisingly, as good as I think Diddy would be offline, I don't know if Diddy is gonna be as good in this situation because of the fact that like you want to get banana set up, you want to get a lot of things set up and get pressure on. But even as Rob, who has incredibly good buttons up close in the gyro, he hasn't been able to consistently stop Ven's traps yet. So I think that it might be, we might be seeing a smaller stage again, but this time without as many platforms or the only maybe problem to switch with that off. Diddy Kong pick is let me ask, yeah, no, we're not seeing it. Yeah, I'm we're gonna not seeing ask you one point. important question, Ajax. You ever see the yep. Phantom trip from the banana? I didn't think so. I didn't nope. think so. Yep, you, th you throw it at Zelda and hope and pray that she didn't have her potassium for the day. But getting into the last game here, we got one more potential uh, victory for Ven, unless Ape of Man can make the run back. We're going to see the switch off here to Town and City. A little bit more, uh, a few more platforms to be able to kind of hide for the most part. But even there, like, Rob's combos aren't all necessarily true. They're mostly mix-ups. And... Nehru's love has been the consistent option to get out of those fake mix-ups. On top of that, as well as constant pressure of Phantom, like, Apex has just been eating a ton of damage, but I think swimming really Ooh. heavy in this game three is showing an absolute turnaround for the momentum. He's constantly swinging out of disadvantage for Apex any time Ben has an opportunity to press a button. Works so well in that opportunity. Yeah, and I, you know, it's actually like ben, ben is so confident in that right now too because Ben, wow. Okay, you know what? I was saying like no Wi Fi Zelda nonsense before, but that actually looked like some Wi Fi Zelda stuff. But it was smart. That was uh, like Ben has been using Neutral B as a way to like get him off, like back him off. But Ape Man was originally doing an excellent job of baiting out Ben in spots where Ben was swinging a lot. And then Ben immediately answered right back. 
That was the cute catch with the falling off air. Let's see if Ibra can make any more of this opportunity. Nah, he's gonna slip away with it, but hey, a lot of damage. Oh, hold on. Make a play. Okay, hey, completely no. unchecked so far and is, like, hasn't taken a single hit here until I decided to open my mouth. And now he's gonna be pressured. And that, you know what? You do that 100%. You use that to cover roll in just in case they decide to uh, get aggressive there. So Ben, you know, Ben, ben is... I'm pretty far behind on percent, but I like the fact that Ape Man is not trying to approach recklessly because he knows that if he keeps doing that, he's going to keep taking hits like this. It's funny. It's like a lot of the reckless buttons. <laughs> a lot of the reckless buttons from Ape Man, I think, are actually working out really well in this game alone. Like, there's so many options where Ape Man is better off healing back, trying to recompose himself, but no. He should push it right on along. He doesn't so, care about Ben swinging because he's yeah. We're gonna talk about it. You want to talk? Yeah, about I mean, it? I, I'm. I, I had. I paused because I had to look back at stream to see what just happened, and I still don't have an answer. Which so, at, what, at what point did the Phantom betray like Zelda? Like, <laughs> did, did, did Zelda forget to pay her rent that month, and Phantom was tired of it? Like, what happened? Bro, everyone's so con so concerned about Arm Rotor slaying them at like twenty percent. People forget that who's got a reflector on it. And this is not the first time that we've seen Apid come back from the ledge using Arm. He's been swinging heavy off the ledge because he knows Ben is trying to position himself in a way to punish, but that's not when you position yourself for anything good. Like, very convincing game three going in favor of Apid. Hey, but all I gotta say is sometimes it do be your own. It, <laughs> oh, well, unfortunately, for uh for Ven in that match though, uh ended up having not only that situation, but the unfortunate drop to the blast zone. But the way Ape Man was looking in that game, anyways, I think that was probably gonna go Ape, Ape Man's favor. Um and getting into this next one though, yeah, I didn't see the rotor either. Uh, I chat I, I was looking deep at it. I don't know when it happened. But uh getting into this next one, it's counter pick advantage in Ven's favor. Um I don't think Ven necessarily feels I don't think stages are really the issue, more so than that game, Ape Man just so happened to call out a lot more swings at a disadvantage, where Ven was getting away with them a lot for free before. So stage doesn't necessarily mean a whole lot to me in terms of this. I think PS2 is probably still going to be left out of the picture, but Ven is incredible on PS2, even with it being robbed, so we could end up going there. Um, the only stage I don't see probably being available is actually I can't really see many. Um, like Kalos, maybe, maybe small battlefield probably be gone. Uh, Yoshi's is probably gone. Yo I don't think that uh, Zelda wants to fight on Yoshi's. So wide stages are definitely to pick. I could see us going back to uh, PS2 here. All right, just taking a quick look to chat. According to Ape Man responding, uh, the wind box from Phantom made the gyro go fast. But the gyro itself wasn't turned to Zelda, so she just got popped with it. Oh, that makes a bit more sense, but also wind boxes are silly. Yeah, that's my only comment on that front. That that's actually for one good 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 awareness on the situation from that from Ape Man recognizing uh, exactly what happened. Two, uh, y'all remember Windy Kong? Let's never have that happen again. Um, no, kids yeah. don't know. Kids don't know about Smash Bros. Customs. We don't need no. to teach them that. I'm learning that's that exactly. Dark magic. Bro, I'm wondering that exactly magic. how many people don't know all the lore of like I, the Smash 4 days. Like, listen, man, I came from a region with DK Will. I don't want to be reminded about Windy Kong. You can, you can keep that. Dude, all I'm saying is, I got to at Evo. We all got to play a giant game of werewolf for like 30 people in a room sponsored by Yummy Pepperoni. So, getting into this next game here, <laughs> it was that was a that was a fun day. <laughs> getting into that was the four. that was the most interesting time that I could ever tell anybody that I wish it was like on a YouTube video for like Dot Esports or something. Yeah. Like, the, the, the history of Yummy Pepperoni as an esports team needs to be like talked about at some point it was it was so funny and i'm not even making that up either we literally went to fatality's room they had a giant game a werewolf where people were betrayed much like that upbeat getting betrayed by that downer right there <laughs> it's uh it, it was a it was a fun time <laughs> i can go on and on about smash 4 lore because there's plenty to talk about but let's get ourselves through the set first because we thought we could be breakfast game for 
yeah, the, once again, this is very similar to what we saw on a Mabel set, right? Mabel was able to get a lead and then Infant Man answered right back. And then PK Chris as well. Anytime he got a, a, like a lead, he answered right back. And right now, starting to take for set lead here, that falling up air confirming into a couple other hits. Like, Infant Man also, that, like, Ben didn't use their, oh, actually, Ben did use his jump. But he gets a trade, which allowed him to get back in after the hit from the up B. Like, if that didn't happen, he was just going to free ball. The aggressive forwards win, a really good call, and the catch on the landing. Ben is looking to play this as fast as possible, regardless of slow Zelda buttons. Not that not care. Yeah, that, again, that is both. Multiple times on that forward smash on the roll in. Ben's catching up to the fact that Ape-Man likes to roll in quite a bit there. It's a pretty common thing. But Ape-Man saying absolutely not to your boy. Get him out of my face going off there immediately to punish him with that side beat. You are so aggressive. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> they really are. They really are. It's like it's the like third the... aggressive up we've seen out of Ven so far just this match. <laughs> That's the only aggressive option we've seen out of Ven this oh! match. I feel like if you tried to explain the stereotypes of Wi-Fi Zelda and Wi-Fi to someone and then showed them this match, they would think you're just outright lying. Because these two, they're just putting it up as close as they can. Yeah, right, like... <laughs> Shout out to some hyper kwamikaze going down. Hey, that's hey, Judy's mind back off. So <laughs> right now, going for the drag down up air, probably uh, up to look pretty up air, but doesn't even need it. Gets the up B, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is game. Ben taking a dub, putting it in the books, getting himself a victory here at MSM Online number fifty-eight. Oh my God, we've had fifty-eight of these. <laughs> People tend to forget that Ultimate has spent more of its lifetime online than it has offline. Now, I don't know if that's scary. That's pain.